get ready. Well, hello, folks, and uh, welcome to my second ride out on my new bike. Uh, if you watched my video the other day, collecting it, she's been essentially sat up in the shed for uh, three or four days because uh, the weather has been rush and uh, it up to be yin yangs and work. So this is my uh, only my second go out on it. I've only taken it for a short spin again today because as lovely as the weather looks like now, apparently there's a, a great big storm coming in called Storm Kira. So. Uh, yeah, you can see the black clouds on the farm over there, but uh, so just get it out for a blast. I wanted to take it out on the road that had significantly less traffic than it had on that bloody M50 the day I picked it up. So I can get a better feel for it. It's still not ideal. The, uh, the roads are a bit uh, sloppy today, but um, we'll give it a whirl. But I'm just back. I had the old GS1200 out and I brought it up to uh, back up to Joe Duffy's. They won't take a trade in on my bike because it's too old, it's 11 years old. But uh, what they do do is they take the photographs to check it out and then they send it on to uh, another dealer that they that they use to uh, to sell older bikes. So I'll have to wait to hear back from him as to what the offer will be. Um, so depending what that's like, I'll probably either you know sell it myself or uh, I might just hang on to it. You know, there's an awful lot of sentimental value in it. Bringing it into Joe Duffy's today was like bringing the family dog in to be put down, you know. Couldn't do it in the end. Uh, I've a lot of, uh, I've a lot of sentiment, sentimental attachment to that bike. It's been everywhere with me. It's been, it was my entry into adventure biking. You know, all the touring. I love it. I absolutely love it. It would kill me to let it go. But the problem I have is I just don't have the space. I don't have the space. And I don't want it to uh, just sit there, you know. I'd like somebody to uh, to get some use out of it, find a home for it, you know, and get as much fun out of it as I did. So if anyone's in the market for a really cheap 2009 BMW R1200 GS Adventure with the boxes, give us a bell, get in touch, you know. Uh, it's got 97,000 miles on it, which isn't high, I, suppose. I mean in old days that was high, but on a modern bike that's not a lot, apparently they can go to 200 250,000 miles, the engine on it is bulletproof, there's nothing wrong with it, there's a bit of rust on the subframe, and one of the auxiliary lights needs to uh, have a wire soldered on it, but, uh, but other than that, there's life in the old dog yet best bike I've ever had. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm driving it today. I, I, you know, I was lamenting this morning bringing it up to Joe Duffy's. It still put a big smile on my face just as much as this thing did. Or does. You know, this thing has more sparkles and buttons and computers and everything. But it doesn't change the experience of actually driving the bike, you know. That's that's where the real fun of it comes, you know. That's uh, that's what puts the smile on your face. Not the gizmos and gadgets, although I do like my gizmos and gadgets. It's just the old uh, riding the bike itself is what puts the smile on my face. Yeah, I, I, the other reason I don't want to go too far is I'm getting a little error message here on the screen. You'll see the little exclamation in the triangle. And what that is, is that it's telling me that the battery in the key is almost dead. And it's not getting a strong enough signal. And I've only one key, so uh, that's, uh, that's the um, I think I don't want to get stuck on. Imagine get going out here and the battery and the key down and then not being able to start the bike. I'll be calling the missus to come get me. So uh, I need to get, get get this short spin in, get home. 
and then identify what battery needs to go into this key fob and swap it out. Yeah, the other thing I've noticed about this bike is the heated hand grips are unbelievable. Uh, my R1200 has the heated hand grips, but once you turn them on, it took a good five minutes for them to heat up. But these things, Jesus, they're, they're full on pretty quick, like, you know, I'd say 30 seconds flat, these things are up to full whack. Uh, far, far more powerful, really good. As I mentioned when I picked it up, because uh, it's really noticeable today, because I, I drove the old R1200 this morning with the old uh, indicator flappy paddles, and now we're going straight back onto this with the Japanese single button here. And I keep going to cancel out the indicator <laughs> with the wrong button. So that's going to be, uh, it's going to take a while to get back into the swing of things with it. but it certainly turns turns the heads of people when you're driving through the town although the old GS did as well because uh, not so much because it's a pretty bike but it just looks badass you know all the boxes and the big fog lights up front and the sheer presence of size of it it certainly made people stop and look and uh, this is doing the same thing but uh, when I posted the video of me picking it up I was delighted to get an awful lot of comments and feedback back from uh, people on following me on YouTube. Uh, it's really, uh, really nice to get the uh, the comments back from people, especially when they're positive or constructive. Yeah. So the uh, the other problem I'm going to have now is that uh, I didn't get the panniers with this thing, so I have to pick out a set of panniers. And uh, I was going to go with the just the BMW ones, but there's a couple of issues with that. One is that uh, they're very expensive for a start, just for the plain silver BMW, which are, which are made by Touratech, by the way. I find this very interesting. So they're basically Touratech panniers, but with BMW branding on it. So for a silver aluminium BMW stroke Touratech pannier. For the two boxes, it's 1,200 quid. For the same boxes, in black, it's an extra 1,000 euros. How does black paint cost 1,000 euros? And what I find very interesting is that when you look at the latest in the Touratech boxes, which I believe is called the EVO, EVO, the silver one of them, which includes the whole bracket system is I think 1300 euros so it's only an extra 100 euros which includes the bracket system, the racks to, to mount them onto but for the black version of those ones it's an extra 55 euros so it's 1355 for the black Evo top of the line Touratech boxes why would you buy the BMW black boxes why because the Touratech Evo are much better they're, I mean they're an upgrade on those BMW boxes they're Touratech and with the Evo they come on the, the end of each panel these little uh, mounts that you can then go on to mount all the Touratech accessories now on the old uh, Touratech, I um, can't remember what they were called, Touratech Pro I think they were. Uh, if you wanted to buy those ac accessories on that little mounting, you had to drill the holes. But now with the Evo, the, whole, the, the, the mounting system is pre-loaded. Pre and the BMW cases doesn't co come with that mounting system. Uh, so for pretty much the same price as the silver BMW cases, I can get the black Evo cases with the mounting uh, struts already uh, installed. 
which means then that I can just go on to Tortotec and start buying all the accessories immediately. I don't have to do any drilling or flipping about. Which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, we'll do a loop. What we'll do is we'll drive through the village here and catch the old castle on camera because that's nice. I think it was in Braveheart. What I'm saying is that the, the panniers that I want are the Evo Touratex in black. The problem I have is that they're out of stock. And it could be a month before I can get them. And the problem with that is I have a big trip, well not a big, but I have a weekender coming up in about two weeks. Or three weeks, is it? I can't remember. But, um, so I have no panniers to bring all my gear, so the only other option I have then is to, uh, is to use the old bike. Which defeats the purpose of spending all the money on this yoke. It's actually part of the Boyne Valley Drive, which I uh, intend to do a full-blown series on. Because uh, I think it's a highly underrated drive might not have the scenery of a lot of the drives but it has a huge amount of uh, history and amazing castles and old cathedrals it has Newgrange on it, the hill of Tara sites that are like 5,000 years old I mean think about that, 5,000 years old that's 2,000 years older than the pyramids in Egypt right here in Ireland there you go There's a huge site, see there's an old, uh, I'm not sure if it's a church or something there, or an old castle, but it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. Uh, so there it is there. I think it was used in Braveheart. Um, I could be wrong. I'm sure it's been used in a few movies, but uh, that's the one that springs to mind. Uh, they do a, a phenomenal tour in it. I haven't done it myself. I've been into the grounds and everything. You go around. The site itself is stunning, but you can actually go into it. And apparently it's very well preserved inside. Uh, see here now, there's the battlements, the walls, but pull in here and see if we can get a better view of it. Trim castle. So yeah, nice little spot if you uh, ever get the chance, you should do it and do that boy in Valley Drive. Uh, I'll definitely do a series on that this year. I'll just wait a few more weeks for the uh, the good weather to come back in. Uh, and I need to get, uh, I never noticed that before, I need to get a lot more drone footage off it. I have some drone footage of some of the really, uh, like I have some of the new Grange and uh, of Nous, which is uh, just up the road from Newgrange uh, and uh, but there's a load of other cool sites that would, uh, that would look the business in the uh, area of footage so we'll, uh, we'll head back to get this key sorted Okay, that was a burst. 
Yeah, you can really feel those shift cams coming in at the higher revs. And it's seamless, it just bursts at the power. Wow. That is pretty impressive. And I'm in rain mode. She's not operating at full power at the moment. In rain mode she takes down uh, I think 20 or 25 percent of the power of the brake horsepower. To change the mode, put the mode onto rain road, right on road road mode now. That's a bit of a strike. Oh my god, this is uh, this is light years ahead of the old bike. Whoa! I have to forget, I have to remember I don't need to pull in the clutch for the gear change. I keep doing that. Still not used to this DCD thing. Got on to reserve. Only in Ireland do they put a broken white line on a bend. Take it down a peg here. Uh, the brakes on this as well is uh, they're, they're unbelievable. Much much more powerful than my old 1200. Uh, they're full on. Oh, the wind is picking up a lot now. Woo! That is phenomenal. Phenomenal! But Jay, you know, you hear people say, no, why do you need all that power? Well, because when you're overtaken or in a bit of bother, 
you might need it to get out. My, philo my philosophy on overtaking is do it as quickly as possible. Because the longer you're out there in the other lane, the more dangerous it is. So get it out and past back in as soon as possible. You get these guys going out and they take ages to go past. That's just putting everybody at risk. But uh, it perfectly shows my point. Anywho, I'll leave it there, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully, we'll have some more fun and experiences on this bike for many years to come. Talk to you soon.